Hello my friends, Dr. Saeed Kazmi once again here and today I'm going to talk uh, how would you approach a child who has got some uh, urinary system abnormality or let me put it that way, let's say you are in an exam scenario and you are asked to do a physical examination of the urinary system on a child. So how are you going to do that? So you might get this station in your MRCPCH clinical, you might get this uh, station in your FCPS Stokes or you might even get this station in your American exam, board exams as well. So how would you approach a child uh, who has got some urinary system abnormality and you are asked in those like five or six minutes to examine the urinary system. So first of all, I'm, I'm not going to go into the, the other details that you already know, like how would you approach the child? How would you do like disinfect your hands, uh, proper hand hygiene? and taking the consent and you know building a repo uh, you know all these things so just i will focus on how would you do the actual physical examination so the first important thing is to have a proper exposure of the child so make sure that the child is only wearing a sort of an underwear or diaper when you're examining the child so the first thing is general examination so you are going to have a look at the child and so what do you look in general examination you are looking at the appearance of the child so the first thing you look whether the child is well looking or is he ill looking because that just gives you the severity of the underlying condition. You also notice if the child has got any equipment attached to him, uh, for example, a urinary catheter or maybe a dialysis machine or a dialysis catheter. You also look at the color of the child. Does he look uh, well pink, well perfused or does he look uh, sort of a bit pale or uh, dehydrated? You also look at the build of the child, whether the child seems to be appropriately built for his age or do you think he is underweight, malnourished. And you look also at the breathing of the child, whether he has got any breathing difficulties because sometimes with some certain types of urinary problems like fluid overloads, they can have breathing issues as well. You also look if the child has got pallor, has he got cellular complexion, which can sometimes happen in chronic uh, kidney disease. And while you are examining, while you're having a general examination, you also look whether the child is exhibiting any periorbital uh, puffiness, which might be an indicator of glomerular disease, like for example, nephrotic syndrome. And you also look for feet edema. And if you feel like the feet are swollen, then you have to actually put your finger in and see uh, what is the grade of that edema and whether it's a pitting one or non-pitting one. So once you have done the general physical examination, uh, or the general examination of the uh, urinary system, you move on to to do your inspection. Now, what you look in an inspection of the urinary system, first of all, you have to do the inspection of the abdomen. So you look at the abdomen, whether the abdomen looks uh, normal or whether there's an abdominal distension. Because if there's abdominal distension, there might be underlying ascites because of renal problem, or there might be some masses, after that, what you do is you look for any scars on the abdomen. So especially you are looking at the front and at the back and you would be looking for any nephrectomy scars because some kids who might have got chronic renal problem, they might have undergone nephrectomy and uh, you have to look for nephrectomy scars. So you have to look front and back both. You also examine the genitalia to see if there is any abnormality of the genitalia, whether the child has got any urinary catheter attached, so on and so forth. Then the next step is to do palpation. So in palpation, you would palpate the abdomen. So you palpate for any masses, if you can feel any sort of a masses, which might be rising of kidneys or might be rising from any other abdominal structures. You also check for kidney balloting. So you put your hands at the back of the child and from the front, you just push it down and you see if you can ballot the kidneys on either side or not. You also have to examine the right iliac force in case of a child who has got nephrectomy scars to see if you can feel for a transplanted kidneys, which are usually transplanted in the right iliac fossa. You also percuss the costal vertebral angles to check for any renal angle tenderness, which usually happens if the child has got like pyelonephritis or kidney infections. And if you feel like there might be a bladder abnormality or bladder anomaly, you also do a percussion for an enlarged bladder as well. And finally, in auscultation, you would auscultate for any renal bruise. So once you have done this examination in your five minutes, the examiner might ask you, would you like to do anything else? So in that particular case, remember three things. In all kids in which you have done the uh, urinary system examination, say you would like to further plot the growth of the child on a growth chart because most of these kids who have got, let's say, chronic renal problem, they might have some form of uh, 
growth issues, especially like, you know, growth stunting. And therefore, it's important that you plot them on a growth chart to see what is the degree of stunting, if any, is present. Number two, you would also like to do the blood pressure monitor. Blood pressure is an important part of your examination to say, I would like to do the blood pressure of reading as well. And the third thing is to do a urine dip. And specifically in urine dip, you want to see if there's any proteinuria or hematuria, which might be hallmarks of uh, kidney problems. So remember, you always complete your examination by mentioning that you would like to do growth charting. Number two, blood pressure reading. And number three, urine dip. After that, the examiner might ask you certain questions related to the urine examination. He would say, okay, well, fine. What further investigations, if a child has got some, let's say, complex kidney problem, what further investigations would you like to do? So the investigations usually which are done in case of like chronic kidney disease or let's say somebody who's got recurrent duty and infections and things, it depends on the condition, but usually the second line investigations are an ultrasound. So an ultrasound, uh, plus minus Doppler ultrasound, you know, to check for renal blood flow is one thing that you need to mention because uh, ultrasound is a very good modality which would show whether the kidneys are appropriate in their anatomy in terms of their size, whether there's any renal scarring, whether there is any like sort of a, uh, in, uh, anatomical pathology, like for example, uh, ureteric stones, and if there's any anomaly with the bladder, so that would be all outlined in uh, ultrasound. Some of the other further tests that can be uh, done is like our like DMSA scanning, uh, which is basically a radionuclide scanning in which uh, you know a sort of a radioactive substance is given, and then as the you know the pictures are taken by a special camera known as a gamma camera, and then it actually shows like if there is any renal scarring or not, and then there are certain other types of tests as well, like for example, uh, voiding uh, micturating cystourethrography, which are done in case if you are suspecting uh, let's say posterior urethral walls or um, you are suspecting vesicourethral reflux and then there are other types of radionuclide scanning as well the MAG3 scans or DTPS scans like you know which can not only detect uh, sort of you know uh, function but also the anatomy like for example uh, if there is any problem excretory problem in the urinary tract or something that can be uh, visualized on those scans. So this was a short video about how do you approach a uh, station in which you are asked to do a uh, urinary system examination. So remember, it always starts in summary. You do a general inspection in which you are looking at the appearance, the build, any sort of an equipment attached to the child, any periorbital puffiness, uh, problems of the uh, complexion, like any pallor, uh, cello or complexion. And then you move on to do inspection of the abdomen. You look for scars. Uh, you look for any abdominal um, distension uh, in uh, palpation you would uh, check for any masses you will check for urinary balloting you will check the right leg fossa for any transplanted kidneys and uh, you would do percussion for an enlarged bladder and in auscultation you actually auscultate for any renal bruise so this is how you would approach any station in which you are supposed or asked to do a urinary system examination so hope you have liked this short video give me a thumbs up if you liked it and if you got any question put it down in the comment section below have a very good day signing off bye bye